Illuminate, obviously, is uh, it's a big system that we purchased uh, district-wide. Um, it can do a lot more than we're using it for, um, but the big part that we're using it for is for is for the either paper or online testing. GoFormative is a free tool. It's an online startup, so in that way, it's a lot like TerraScore. Um, it's we don't purchase it, we don't control it. What we want to do is we, we kind of try to make a table of a comparison between the two systems for when you might want to use one and then the other. So you want to start with the top one up there? Sure. So like Kevin said, Illuminate is a big sort of testing and assessment platform and also data management. So your student rosters, you have accounts as teachers already. Every student has an online portal account already and they can access tests that you send them. And I say test, you can give it as a homework, you can give it as a quiz, a work that you send them online. So kids have accounts already, you have an account, and all of your students and classes are already rostered to you through Aries. It clicks, clicks together every night, so your students are in there and you can assign things just to your kids and your classes. We go formative, students enroll themselves with a code that you give them. Um, you can have you can set up classes based on your rosters, or you can set up different groups however you want. Um, or if you want to do just a quick thing and not have kids log in at all, um, they can they can just be a guest and they don't you know you're not worried about names or anything. You can get that. Um, students can log in uh, with their Google account, so they can do that with their district account. They don't have to make up a new password or remember. Else, so they can use their Google account. Uh, for Itemix in Illuminate, uh, there's already the big reason we purchased Illuminate in the first place is because it has pre made, professionally written assessment items for English and math that are tied to the Common Core or the new California standards, and content in history and science tied to the current or former California content standards. These are really robust items written to the same specifications that kids will see on the Smarter Balanced Assessment. So the same kind of select all and apply, drag and drop, draw and graph, um, highlighting evidence that supports a claim, that kind of thing. So super robust for English and math, really great assessment items. Uh, for history and science, I would say that's more of like your DOK 1, 2 kind of multiple choice. Really good for you know maybe quizzes on specific content or you just want to check it out and see what's in there. Um, so that's the, those are the item banks uh, for within the living. Go formative has nothing. They have no item banks. Next. Uh, in eliminate, creating your own questions. So you want to build a test that you're going to give to your kids to take online. Um, you can, this is kids culture. I guess the short answer is creating your own questions is a challenge. You type the step, you type in all the distractors, like it to standards, you publish it to your own item bank. Then when you build your own item bank, then you go back in and you build an assessment out of those items. So it's an investment of time, maybe good for like a cross-departmental project where you really want to create your own content to give to kids online. Um, if you're going to give an assessment on paper in Illuminate, you can just make your test on paper, print it out, print out the bubble sheet, and have the kids do it that way. But if you're trying to create an assessment to give online and illuminate of your own content, it's a little more challenging. Creating your own questions in GoFormative is actually pretty easy. Um, it's uh, it's web-based, and so you go in, you just type, and then put in the right answer, and then click done, and, and you're good. So it's much easier in GoFormative than, uh, than I think it is in Illuminate if you're actually writing your own questions. Uh, in <laughs> Illuminate, you can just set up an answer key without inputting questions. If you have a test on paper, you can just input your answer key. You could attach a PDF to it that you can refer back to later. Um, and if you are giving a, just a multiple choice test that you want kids to take online, you can upload a PDF of that multiple choice and upload the input the answer key, and the kids can work in it side by side, almost like they have their bubble sheet electronically. That's a new feature. They just uh, turned that on. I haven't had anybody use it yet, but for it to auto grade, it has to be a multiple choice assessment. So you're, it's limited. The easy stuff is limited. GoFormative also does something like that. You can upload either a Word file or a PDF, 
and then basically you just kind of put the questions on top of the PDF so the kids would see the page and they'd see a blue number one. They click on blue number one and multiple choice pops up A, B, C, D. Well, the actual question and the answer choices are in your PDF or Word doc, so you don't have to retype everything. So these two right here, where they're using existing Word or PDF files, kind of eliminate or greatly reduce the requirement to write your own questions and, and get them in the system. Because you just don't have to do that. You can use existing Word and PDF files. Um, you can for both uh, insert a link or a video or an image within your question. So to kind of make, I don't know if you wanted to use it for a reteach purposes, for example, or a flipped classroom. Here's your little YouTube video. Uh, then you can Ask some questions about that. So. Multiple versions illuminate supports multiple versions of tests so that you so that not every kid in the room is doing the same the same questions in the same order. Go formative does not. It's intended for kind of smaller things where you're not so much worried about about different kids, you know, having the same questions in the same order. Uh, you can share an assessment in illuminate, so Taylor could write it for her whole department and then distribute it to colleagues with rights to give it to their kids, and then you can just give the same assessment as a colleague if they share it with you, uh, and then thus compare your data. Uh, so it's great. Illuminate really supports the uh, all the levels of data analysis that you need for your PLC conversation and more. You can sort by demographics, students, upgrades, all that kind of thing. So the data recording in Illuminate is robust. Go formative allows you to share tests as well. Um, you, it, it, it shares it as a copy. So if I make a test and then I say I want to share it with Reedy, she'll get a code and it'll, it'll come up and say accept. And when you click accept, it'll make a copy of that, of that formative assessment and you'll have it in your own. Then if I go back and make changes in mine, it doesn't change yours. So I can share it once, but it's not like, it's not like we're working on it together. Uh, test delivery. Illuminate is paper or online, so you can print bubble sheets for kids, and on those bubble sheets you could use them as multiple choice, select all that apply, short answer, they could write a few words, and then you as the instructor would say, okay, well, this was a three-point question, this kid got all three points, and you would bubble in their three or their two or whatever, so you could do some, some rubric scoring. You could make an Illuminate bubble sheet be a rubric, like question one is, can write a good thesis statement, 10 points. Question two, can support an claim with evidence, that would be 10 points or whatever. So you can use the Illuminate bubble sheet as a rubric or as a multiple choice test or kind of a combination of both. Or you can give an assessment in Illuminate online. So online or on paper. Go formative is online. It's a website. You can try to print it out. I don't recommend it. Not going to be. Uh, you can, for uh, Illuminate, you can test on a computer or a Chromebook. You could use a tablet, but you're not going to use, use a phone. It's just, it's way too small. The interface is very good. I don't think most of our kids are bringing tablets. We don't have a lot, though. We don't have a lot in our district, so it's technically possible, and it's fine, but it's just, it, there's not an app. It's working through the browser. For GoFormative, it's all built in HTML5, so it works great on phones and tablets. Um, it's, it's set up specifically for mobile for mobile things. So if you do have kids bringing phones or tablets or computers or whatever, they can do that themselves through their browser, and it works really nicely. Even on the questions in GoFormative, they have like draw a graph or a drawing response or like a write by hand, and you can swipe with your finger on the phone screen. That works oh, really nicely. Yeah. Uh, and that goes along with this one right here because. One of the really neat things about GoFormative is that the teacher screen, once your kids are working in it, the teacher screen shows you live, what the kids are doing live. They don't have to submit for you to see what they're doing. So if it is a question where they're drawing something, you're seeing a little miniature version of their screen and you're seeing them as they draw it, all of them. Super neat. If you're typing, if they're typing something, you're seeing them as they type it. So. The idea, again, is truly formative because you can be looking at that and walk over and say, hey, maybe you should try this. You know, you can catch them before they submit it and have forgotten, you know, forgotten what they did. So that's a really nice feature of GoFormative that, that Illuminate doesn't have. Uh, 
What Illuminate does have if your kids, like the SBAC, when your kids are taking the assessment online, you can see what question they're on. The Joe Bob's on question two, this guy's already done what's going on, but it doesn't show you their progress as they're, as they're going through each question. Illuminate lets you, if you're on a desktop computer, not a Chromebook or a Chrome base, but a desktop computer, you can lock the, the window so they can't Google your, they can't go to Google or another website. So that's Go Formative is a web-based program. They have to use it through through a browser tab, so they have obviously no control over 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 that. So they can't. There's nothing like that. For both of these, though, they're going to auto grade the item types they can. So multiple choice, true false, uh, short answers. They're going to auto grade um, the other item types, longer answers, diagrams. They, they you know obviously you have to grade those yourself. But both of them will auto grade whatever they can and then give results to the entity. Uh, data analysis, like I said earlier, illuminate all four levels of data analysis for your PLC. So item analysis, kids in my class by ELO, kids in our classes by ELO, and then who are the kids that need the most support. So it'll give you all of that. Go form it, it gives you some of that. Um, it's going to give you uh, by question, it's going to give you by kid. There's no, currently there's no way to tag different questions by standard, so you can't really summarize by standard. Theoretically, in a formative assessment, it's a short three or four question thing anyway, so you're hopefully just doing one standard anyway. But, you know, in any case, so it gets you some of the, that data analysis, but it's, the data analysis is not as robust as, as but if you were using a go formative quiz as a really quick common formative assessment with your neighbor and you're, you know this is all about ELO right. number six or whatever, in effect your data analysis is done, right? If you just get your overall student performance and then identify those kids who are struggling. You can't compare data in one spreadsheet together, but you bring your laptop, I'll bring mine, we'll open up our quiz and we'll discuss it together. Yeah. And that gets us to sharing test results where go formative really doesn't have any way to do that other than what we just described. You got your computer, you got yours, we're going to sit and look at it. Illuminate, though, we're adding, we're setting up groups by course. So everybody teaching a particular course will be a group and we'll be able to see each other's results within the student results within that. Um, so the sharing the test results there. So we know we're in a situation where TerraScore is going away. I don't know if any of you are using TerraScore. But there are a lot of people traumatized across the district because TerraScore is going away. Whichever of these you end up using, and your colleagues end up using for your assessments, store your assessments someplace else. Store them so you have them. Use the, the, uh, the uploading the Word in the PDF document so that you've got them somewhere and they're not in stored in one of these systems because someday, and that someday might be a long time from now, but someday these systems won't be there anymore. Someday we won't have Illuminate anymore. Someday we won't have GoFormative anymore. That, that could be 50 years from now, but someday that's not gonna be there. So make sure, and Gwen had a really good analogy, it's like you wouldn't post all your pictures on Facebook and just leave them there and have that be the only copy of all your family pictures. You'd have it backed up somewhere. Do the same thing with your assessments so that when we, if, if, we end up in a situation like this where we're using a lot of people are using a system that's going away. Hopefully, we won't have trauma and, and tears and gnashing of teeth. So, you know. it's just it's just good practice. You know, keep yeah. you're going to spend the time writing it. It might take you a little longer at first to type in a word document and then copy and paste it. Yeah. Kind of, you know, make your professional judgments around what do, how do I want to be using my right. time? Should God forbid, you know, these are around. We want you to have have your stuff, and then that way. We H drive or whatever, Google Drive, you try it in multiple systems. A lot of people also have been asking us about lockdown browsers. I don't want to do any online testing until I can lock everything down so the kids can't possibly see anything else. Well, kids can all, are always going to find a way around something. So I wouldn't rely on computers to do the monitoring that we all do when kids are doing assessments. Um, when I was when I was having kids take tests on Google Forms, I would just tell them, 
one window open, one tab open only. And so when I, I can just look at the screen and just see, oh, you've got two windows open, go close them right now. And then, you know, and it's simple things like that. It's never going to replace the teacher monitoring what kids are doing during a test. So I think there are some teachers who are kind of relying on that, and hoping and wishing for that. And, and I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't rely on that for, for test security. 